Hi, it's Katrina. Get ready to be amazed by some of archaeology's weirdest finds. Today we'll be exploring some of the craziest artifacts ever found, from ancient treasures to mysterious carvings. So grab a snack and get comfy, my history enthusiasts, and let's get into it. The Devil's Bible the Codex Gigas, otherwise known as the Devil's Bible, is not only a massive manuscript, it is a wild ride through history. And when I say it is the largest medieval manuscript in the world, I'm not kidding. We're talking about a book that is 36 inches long. That's roughly the same size as a three-year-old child. Now, back in medieval times, having a giant illuminated Bible was pretty standard, especially in monasteries. But the Codex Gigas? It's like the king of all Bibles. It contains the entire Vulgate Bible, as well as an encyclopedia, medical works, and more. All written in Latin, it's like the whole medieval library in one book. You may be wondering, why is it called the Devil's Bible? Well, that's because right smack in the middle of this colossal book, there is a full-page portrait of Satan himself. He's crouching like an animal and has two horns sticking out of his head. His arms are stretched upwards, and he has a forked tongue like a serpent. Attached to his fingers and toes are large claws. His face is green and grotesque. In the middle of all this biblicalness, there is the page with the devil on one side and a serene image of heaven on the other. It's like a cosmic face-off right in the pages. And get this. The book weighs a whopping 165 pounds. That's like carrying around a mountain goat. No wonder they say it's the devil's handiwork. So where did this thing come from? Legend says that some poor monk was given an impossible task. Create this mammoth book in just one night or face a terrible fate. So what does he do? He makes a deal with the devil, of course. Lucifer himself supposedly helps finish the manuscript, and in return, the monk throws in a shout out to his new buddy by adding a big old picture of him right there in the pages. If the rumors are true, the book was created by Herman the Recluse, a 13th century Benedictine monk from the Czech Republic, but his monastery was destroyed in the 15th century during the Bohemian Wars. Shortly after it was written, it was pawned by the Benedictines to the Cistercian monks of the Sedlec Monastery. For 70 years, it was held at the Sedlec Monastery. In 1477, it was moved to a different priory in Brauma. Off. Then it changed hands again and fell into the private collection of Emperor Rudolf II. However, in 1648, at the end of the Thirty Years' War, the Emperor's entire collection was looted by the Swedish army. So, starting in 1649, the book was stored in the Swedish Royal Library in Stockholm. A fire broke out at the Tre Kronor Royal Castle on May 7, 1697, destroying the majority of the Royal Library. But somehow, the the Devil's Bible was saved, while the rest of the books were left to burn. Who saved the book is up for debate. Could it have been the devil? According to ancient accounts, the book was thrown out of a window. It supposedly landed on a bystander and injured them. I mean, that had to hurt. Remember, this thing was 165 pounds. Today, the Devil's Bible is kept at the National Library of Sweden, where it is on display for the whole world to see. Nanjing Belt. Picture this. It's 1952 and you're a construction worker in China. You and your coworkers are breaking ground to build a new sports field for a school. You're digging and digging and then you hit something big, like really big. What they found was an ancient tomb, and inside, among the usual relics, was a belt. But this wasn't just any belt, it was special. It wasn't made of your typical metals like silver or copper. This belt was also made of aluminum. But wait, that's not possible, at least not according to what we know about history. You see, aluminum is tricky. It's not easy to make, especially way back in the 3rd century AD. In fact, this alloy wasn't even created until the 1820s. Yet here it was, in a belt that belonged to a Chinese general named Zhao Chu, who died in 297. He was a hero who fought off barbarian invaders. When he died, he was buried in a tomb fit for a king. And in that tomb was an aluminum belt that turned the world of archaeology upside down. The leather portions of the belt had rotted away long before the tomb was discovered, leaving behind 17 fragments. 
These pieces were scattered around Zhao Chu's hips, well, his skeleton's hips. Some of these metallic fragments were made from copper and silver, but a few of them were made almost entirely of aluminum. Now, at first, archaeologists were skeptical. How could something as advanced as aluminum exist way back then? But tests confirmed it. This belt was the real deal, now known as the Nanjing Belt, it wasn't just a fluke or a modern addition to an ancient grave, but here's where things get really interesting. Some folks say that this isn't the only aluminum belt out there. There are rumors of others hidden away in the dusty corners of history. Could it be that the ancient Chinese had a secret recipe for making aluminum? I mean, they kept the recipe of gunpowder to themselves for centuries. Or was there something more to it? There is a theory floating around that says these aluminum belts are proof of ancient aliens visiting Earth. But that's crazy, right? Well, who knows? After all, history is full of surprises, and who knows what other secrets are waiting to be discovered. And now it's time for a break because it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Sherry with Flowers and Jewels, as well as Rothenstein from Germany for your continued support and your kind words. If you are new here, be sure to join the Origins Explained family by subscribing to the channel. Now let's get back into it. Ancient Carving of a Story 11,000 years ago, there was a bustling community that loved to tell stories. Not just any stories, though. In this city, the earliest known depiction of a narrative scene was discovered. It was found on a carved panel that was etched into a Neolithic bench. The carvings were discovered in 2021 at the site of Sabers in Turkey. The scenes progress across the panel, sort of like frames on a film strip. The art on this bench tells a story, one that was carved into the stone thousands of years ago. According to archaeologist Elim Ozdogan, the story isn't just a jumble of images. It is a clear sequence of events. The bench, which is about two feet wide, shows a bull on the left. Next to it is a person with a strange shape on their belly that resembles a male private part. This person is holding a rattle and facing the bull, while their back is turned to three other figures. These figures include two leopards with big teeth and another figure holding its private part. Don't get too hung up on that, though. The picture shows the wild and aggressive side of animals, which was a common theme in the Stone Age. The way the bench was made reminds us of similar sculptures also found in Turkey, like the one where a person is carrying a leopard on their back, and another that shows humans and animals together in different ways. It's like a little movie carved into the stone for everyone to see. This artifact wasn't hidden away in some remote cave. It was found in a communal building, a place where everyone would gather and learn about the story. It was like an ancient version of a movie theater or a community center. So what does this all mean? The archaeologists who found it are still trying to piece it all together. They think it may have something to do with the transition from a nomadic lifestyle to a more sedentary one in the Neolithic period. But who knows? Maybe there is more to it than that. Perhaps it's about the relationship between humans and animals. Or it could be something else entirely. One thing's for sure, though. This little piece of car stone has opened up a whole new chapter of the past. And maybe in the near future, experts will find the sequel. Grave Goods Recently, archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology, or MOLA, stumbled upon a jaw-dropping treasure in Northamptonshire. Sorry, I mean Northamptonshire, England, from 1,300 years ago. This dazzling necklace, which dates back to between 630 and 670, is like nothing we've seen before. It's dripping with at least 30 pendants and beads made from a mix of Roman coins, gold, garnets, glass, and semi-precious stones. The necklace wasn't found by itself. It was part of a much bigger discovery when an elite female burial was unearthed in 2022, complete with other intriguing treasures that have yet to be fully studied. This treasure trove is now known as the Harpole Treasure. It is thought to be part of the most significant female burial from its era ever found in Britain. Levant Benz Balas, the Mola site supervisor who led the team, described the moments they unearthed the incredible find. In his own words, he said that as the first glimmers of gold appeared from the earth, it became clear that they'd stumbled upon something remarkable, but they didn't realize how special the discovery was going to be until later on. The centerpiece of this necklace is the largest and most intricate. It's a rectangular pendant with a cross motif made of red garnet set in gold. It's believed to have originally been part of a hinged clasp, but was repurposed for this burial. But wait! 
there's more! The team also found two decorated pots and a shallow copper dish. But the real kicker came when they took x-rays of the soil from the grave. What they found was a striking, elaborately decorated cross, featuring unusual depictions of human faces cast in silver. This suggests that the woman buried here may have been an early Christian leader. That's pretty groundbreaking, considering the fact that women have typically been kept out of those roles by the church. The woman's skeleton decomposed over time, but the combination of grave goods tells us that she was most likely someone of high status maybe an abbess or a royal figure. This discovery is nothing short of miraculous. It's a once-in-a-lifetime find that has the potential to rewrite our understanding of history. Prancing Horse In early 2024, a group of divers from the cultural organization BC Sicilia were exploring an area off the coast of San Leone, Sicily, when they spotted something that made them raise an eyebrow. It was an object that was labeled as a tank on their maps, but it didn't quite look like one. So they decided to take a closer look at this underwater mystery. And thank goodness they did. The divers were shocked by what they found. Instead of a tank, they discovered an ancient marble statue of a prancing horse. This statue, which measures about six feet wide and five feet tall, has the grandeur and style you'd expect from an ancient Greek temple. In fact, it's thought to have been part of a temple dedicated to Zeus. You know, the god with the power to fling lightning bolts. But how did this statue, a relic of ancient times, end up underwater off the coast of Sicily? Well, unfortunately, the exact age and backstory remain a mystery. Maybe it was intentionally thrown into the water when Greek builders decided to replace the horse with something else. Or maybe it simply fell into the water when the temple it belonged to was destroyed. The truth here is anyone's guess. San Leone, where the statue was discovered, sits on the island of Sicily, a little over 300 miles south of Rome. Local officials, along with the BC Sicilia team, carefully raised the statue to the surface. A photo shows it covered in crusty brown remnants from its time submerged in the sea. There are plans for the statue to undergo a preservation process in the future, which will ensure that this remarkable piece of history remains intact. How do you think the prancing horse statue ended up in the sea? Let me know what you think in the comments below! Mayan Calendar Now let's take a trip back in time to the ancient Maya world. Inside Las Pinturas Pyramid in San Bartolo in northern Guatemala, archaeologists stumbled upon a treasure trove of ancient murals. They date back to a time when the mighty Maya civilization was in full swing. But of course, that's not all. Tucked away in these ancient murals, scholars have uncovered the oldest Maya calendar ever found. This incredible find, discovered by University of Texas professor David Stewart and his team, dates back to between 300 and 200 BC. That's over 2,000 years ago. This site was first found back in 2001. And since then, it's been a hotspot for fascinating discoveries. So let's talk about this calendar. The Maya were no slackers when it came to keeping time. They had this incredibly complex calendar system called the Tzolk In, which was based on the movements of the planets, the sun, and the moon. This wasn't your average calendar. Instead of months, they had days represented by glyphs numbered from 1 to 13. The date 7 Deer was followed by 8 Star, nine jade or water, and so forth. Deer played a huge role in Maya culture, both in their everyday lives and their religious ceremonies. The seven deer glyph, representing one of the days in the Mayan 260-day calendar, or Tzolk In, was found painted on a small piece of plaster. It's like finding a tiny piece of a puzzle that unlocks a whole new world of understanding. And get this, the writing and artistry on these fragments show a level of sophistication that suggests the calendar system had been used even earlier than we thought. The Maya also had a writing system with over 800 different glyphs. The earliest example of this writing system was also found in San Bartolo. According to Heather Hurst, one of the co-authors of the study, there are about 7,000 mural fragments varying in size at this site. So what's next? Well, there's a good chance experts will uncover even earlier examples of this Maya calendar system. The Maya world is full of surprises, and we're just getting started. The Whale in the Jungle Get ready for a whale of a tale because we've got some jaw-dropping news. 
A bunch of fossil hunters stumbled upon a massive skeleton in the jungles of Taiwan. The skeleton belonged to a creature that is not typically found in the jungle, a whale. In May 2022, Zhao Wenbo and Zhang Yumu were scouring the jungle for prehistoric specimens when they noticed something poking out of the ground. Turns out it was four ribs of a humongous whale. Excited by their discovery, they reached out to a colleague at the National Cheng Kong University who confirmed that this was no ordinary find. This ancient whale fossil is estimated to be an impressive 70% complete, marking it as the most intact whale fossil discovered to date. Speculation suggests it could belong to either a blue whale or a big fin whale, both of which were colossal creatures that roamed the seas around 85,000 years ago. And they are still around today, but the fossils are pretty old. It's incredibly well preserved, complete with shoulder blades, jaw bones, the back of the skull, and tail vertebrae. Surprisingly, whales trace their ancestry back to land dwelling creatures. Believe it or not, they share a common ancestor with hippos, dating back approximately 50 million years. Today, we witness the remarkable results of this evolutionary journey, with blue whales reaching astonishing lengths of up to 98 feet. Fin whales follow closely behind, measuring an impressive 85 feet in length. The area in Taiwan where this amazing find was made, Heng Chun, is a fossil hotbed. It's like a gold mine of prehistoric wonders. And trust me, this isn't the first one they found. They've also uncovered shells, sharks, crabs, and even more whale bones. Now, you might be wondering how they managed to get all of these massive bones out of the jungle. Well, it wasn't easy. A team of eight people had to carry these bones on wooden stretchers through rugged terrain and dense vegetation. Can you imagine hauling a 736 pound jawbone over rough ground? I'm getting tired just thinking about it. The whalebone specimens are now in the capable hands of the geology team at Taiwan's Science Museum. They are going to clean them up and do more research to figure out how these whales adapted to changes in the environment over the years. Who knows what other wonders are just waiting to be found in the jungle? The Roman Gemstone In July of 2023, in the waters near Venice, Italy, researchers stumbled upon a real Roman gemstone. But it's not the gemstone itself that has history buffs buzzing. It's the engraving on the gemstone of a mysterious mythological figure. This little beauty, likely once part of an elegant piece of jewelry, has been hiding in Leo Piccolo, a village north of Venice. It's believed to be etched with a figure from Roman mythology. It's colorful and striped like a little agate rainbow. Finding ancient treasures in this area isn't that surprising. Other gems have popped up before. This suggests that in the past, wealthy Romans used to swing by for a little Venetian vacation. Alberto Ballarin, a local official, is pretty pumped about the whole thing. He says it's giving Italians a peek into their past, and he's all for it. Gemstones like this one are incredibly rare and often depict mythological figures or scenes from daily life. This particular stone shows a man wearing a helmet. He's dressed in clothes that could be armor with what appears to be a bow slung over his back. But who he is is still an unsolved mystery. What's even more amazing is that this discovery is part of a larger project led by Professor Carlo Beltrame and Dr. Elisa Costa to explore the history of the area. They also uncovered a brick and oak structure that left them scratching their heads. They thought it might have been a villa, but nope, it turns out it was an oyster farm. Romans sure knew how to live it up. And guess what? These ancient finds are popping up all over Italy. In mid-July 2023, they found a theater that once belonged to the notorious Emperor Nero. It's a real-life treasure hunt, and we get to watch from the sidelines. Necromancy in a Cave Next up, we've got an archaeology story that's straight out of the movies. There is a mysterious cave in Israel, surrounded by centuries-old myths and legends. Buried deep inside the cave, under years of earth and rock, are artifacts that tell a tale as old as time. The ancient Romans called this cave a portal to the underworld. Experts have been studying this cave for decades, but it wasn't until recently, in 2023, that they made a breakthrough. They found artifacts that hint at a bizarre cult that used the cavern for rituals. They uncovered oil lamps and axes, as well as three human skulls. 
Just the skulls. There were no bodies attached. These skulls were likely used in rituals, possibly for necromancy, a practice of trying to communicate with the dead. The site, known as the Te Omim Cave, is located in the Jerusalem Hills. It's a dark, mysterious place, with a deep shaft and a pool of water. Legend has it that it was once a portal to the underworld, where the dead could rise and communicate with the living. The artifacts found inside the cave, including the human skulls, suggest that it was used for some kind of dark magic. It's believed that it was used in the past as a hideout during the Bar Kokhba Revolution, a Jewish rebellion against the Romans in the 2nd century AD. But the cult that used the cave most likely wasn't Jewish. They may have been locals or even outsiders who traveled to the area to perform their mysterious rituals. So what does this all mean? Well, for one thing, it shows us that ancient people had a complex understanding of the world around them. They believed in the power of caves and other natural features to connect them with the divine. And it also tells us that there is still so much we don't know about our past. Every discovery like this one brings us one step closer to unlocking the secrets of ancient civilizations. As researchers continue to study the artifacts found, we can only imagine what else they might uncover. But one thing's for certain, this cave is more than just a cave. It's a window into the past, a portal to another world, and maybe at one time, a real portal to the underworld. Miniature Sphinx The Great Sphinx of Egypt is massive. It's 66 feet tall, towering over humans who travel to this sandy landscape to marvel at its amazing features. But it's missing its nose. So it's a good thing that a miniature replica of the Great Sphinx, with its nose still attached, was found in the Dendera Temple Complex. The Mini Sphinx was discovered by a team from Cairo's Ain Shams University. This team, the first Egyptian-led archaeological mission at the site, uncovered the pint-sized Sphinx in a limestone shrine nestled within a red brick-and-mortar water basin. Beneath it, they found a Roman stela inscribed with hieroglyphics and demotic script. It sounds like these that I really wish I could read hieroglyphics. The lead archaeologist of the excavation, Mamdu al-Damati, described the Sphinx as having royal facial features and a soft smile with dimples. The statue sports a nimis, a traditional striped headdress adorned with a stylized upright cobra known as a uraeus. The cobra symbolizes royalty and divine authority in ancient Egypt, so it's no wonder you can find so many depictions of snakes all over the place. Sphinxes, mythical creatures with human heads on lion bodies, were revered as guardians by the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. They were often built outside of temples. The renowned Great Sphinx of Giza, believed to represent the Egyptian pharaoh Khafre, is one of the oldest monumental sculptures. It dates back about 4,500 years to around 2500 BC. The mini Sphinx, however, was crafted 2500 years later by an unknown artist. Situated within the Temple of Dendera, built during the Roman era in honor of the god Horus, the newfound Sphinx sheds light on the site's rich history. Excavation work, which has been ongoing since February 2023, has also included magnetic and radar scans of the temple area. And in the future, they plan to extend the dig to connect the Temple of Dendera and the Temple of Horus. The Dinosaur's Last Day In 2022, a group of scientists armed with shovels and brushes stood in a field in North Dakota. Their goal was to unlock the secrets of a world that disappeared millions of years ago. And guess what? They may have hit the jackpot. The team at the Tanis dig site unearthed something truly remarkable. The fossilized leg of a dinosaur. But not just any dinosaur, mind you. One that lived on the very day when the world as we know it changed forever. Some 66 million years ago, to be precise. And this isn't just a typical leg fossil. It's in pristine condition, preserved by the sands of time. The team also found the remains of fish that had breathed in debris from a massive impact that scientists believe triggered the mass extinction event. And when I say massive, I really mean it. We're talking about a crater 90 miles wide. The impact was so powerful that it sent debris raining down on the Earth, wiping out nearly 75% of life on the planet. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do we know all this? 
Well, it turns out that the fish and other fossils found at the dig site are packed with valuable information. They tell us that the impact happened in the spring or early summer, and they even give us clues about what kind of object caused it. It was either an asteroid or a comet. Scientists are still debating, but one thing's for sure, this discovery is a game changer. The team is currently hard at work analyzing the fossils and the debris, trying to piece together the puzzle of what happened all those millions of years ago. This is a story that is far from over, so stay tuned because the Tanis dig site has more surprises in store. Who knows, maybe in the future we'll finally have all the answers to the question of what happened on that fateful day. The day the dinosaurs disappeared. Spiral Petroglyphs Imagine that you're taking a hike along the Castle Rock Pueblo Trail in southwest Colorado. The desert landscape is pretty barren, dotted here and there with the occasional rock, bush, or tree. It's hot, so you start to zone out, just trying to make it to the end of the trail. But as you're walking, you brush your hand against the face of a canyon wall and notice that you feel indentations. You snap out of your daze and turn to look at what you felt with your fingertips, only to realize that you are standing in front of a spiral petroglyph. These rock carvings were found at a site known as Castle Rock Pueblo on the Mesa Verde Plateau, near the Colorado-Utah border. The area is best known for its ancestral Pueblo settlements, carved into the surrounding canyon walls. But who were the ancestral Puebloans? They were a group of indigenous people who inhabited this place from about the 1250s to 1274 AD. These Pueblo settlements developed one of the most sophisticated pre-Columbian cultures in North America. They mastered the craft of building multi-story stone houses that resembled medieval townhouses. They were also famous for their amazing rock art, intricate jewelry, and ceramics. But let's jump back to the present. Archaeologists investigated the area and discovered a series of petroglyphs that were chiseled into the canyon walls high above the cliff settlements. The rock carvings, which include mesmerizing spirals stretching over three feet in diameter, can be found spread out across more than two and a half miles. So what did these carvings represent? Well, researchers believe that the ancestral Puebloans used these etchings as a calendar. Researchers think they use these petroglyphs for astronomical observations and also to commemorate special days like the winter and summer solstices or the spring and autumn equinoxes. Or maybe they just really liked carving spirals into solid rock. Who knows? The Lamassu Some of the most amazing archaeological discoveries come to us from the Middle East. And in October of 2023, something new was unearthed in northern Iraq a massive statue of a winged deity. This discovery was made by a team of archaeologists led by Pascal Butterlin. They revealed a 2,700-year-old alabaster statue of the Assyrian deity Lamassu. This divine creature, often depicted as having a human head, the body of a bull, and bird-like wings, was no small find. Weighing a whopping 18 tons and measuring 13 feet by 13 feet, this statue is a testament to ancient craftsmanship on a grand scale. What's even more impressive is the fact that this statue was almost entirely intact, except for one crucial piece, the head. Surprisingly, this part of the statue had already found its way to the Iraq Museum in Baghdad. It was located and confiscated from smugglers back in the 1990s. The rest of the statue, however, was found in an exceptional state of preservation standing tall at the entrance to the ancient city of Khorsabad. Professor Butterlin, who has devoted years to studying the Middle East's archaeological treasures, was stunned by the statue's size and intricate details. After all, it's not every day that you stumble upon something this monumental. This remarkable statue, commissioned during the reign of King Sargon II in the 8th century BC, was originally built to guard the city of Khorsabad. Its sophisticated features and historical significance are nothing short of spectacular. Despite facing threats of destruction during the 1990s looting and the 2014 attack by ISIS, the statue survived, thanks to the quick thinking of the village residents who hid it. Thanks for watching! Which one of these artifacts would you like to see with your own eyes? Or have you already? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed!
Missing Stonehenge Chunk Turns out that a missing chunk of Stonehenge that was taken as a souvenir has helped to solve a long-standing mystery of where the stones originally came from. A workman named Robert Phillips was part of a team that helped to re-erect Stonehenge in the 1950s. One of the standing stones was fractured, so they drilled through it in three places to strengthen it with metal rods. Robert kept one of the drilled cores and returned it in 2019 for his 90th birthday. Now known as the Phillips core, it measures about an inch in diameter and is about 42 inches long. A small part of another core was found in a nearby museum. The other ones are assumed to be lost. But with just those cylinders, researchers were able to reanalyze them, solving an age-old mystery about where the Stonehenge stones were quarried from. Until the study was done, little was known about these sandstone boulders, or sarsens, which were placed there starting as far back as 4,500 years ago. The tallest among them measure as much as 30 feet tall and weigh over 25 tons. After intensive X-ray fluorescence spectrometry and chemical signatures and all kinds of stuff involving modern technology, it turns out that nearly all the monument's massive stones came from Westwoods in Wiltshire, which is about 15 miles from the site. Many of the smaller blue stones, on the other hand, were sourced from over 140 miles away in the Priscelli Hills of Western Wales. Thanks to the man's decision to return the property to the English government, scientists can now say where the stones come from and are hoping to use LIDAR to make high-resolution maps of the area, showing where the stones were cut and how people in Neolithic times were able to carry the stones such long distances. Mysterious Inca Remains While constructing an irrigation tank in central Ecuador in 2019, workers came across some mysterious artifacts. The workers got quite the shock when they discovered ancient human remains and paused the long-awaited project while a team of archaeologists explored the site. In addition to the skeletons, which date back roughly 500 years, they found a ring and several well-preserved ceramic vessels with unique symbols, including a Christian cross and what looks like the letter W. It looks like the workers had uncovered a cemetery under the field. There hasn't been much money for excavation, so the mayor of the town himself hired archaeologists so they could see what was going on. They discovered a rectangular Inca cancha, an earth and clay mass that served as the foundation of either a home or a fortification, measuring 43 by 23 feet. Usually they are made up of stones, but stones that were likely used in building the cancha are missing, probably because they were repurposed later on for building houses. The team uncovered 12 water-damaged skeletons in shallow, three-foot-deep graves. Their teeth are better preserved, leaving researchers hopeful that they will be able to extract genetic information that will tell them if all the people buried in the cemetery are related or not. While official results are pending, it's believed that the remains and artifacts date back to sometime between 1450 and 1540 AD, during the transition from late Inca culture to Spanish colonialism. While the cemetery itself is located in Inca territory, the ring that was found with one of the skeletons and the ceramics decorated with designs that are not associated with the Inca culture provide more questions than answers. Nebra Sky Disk One of the most mysterious and controversial artifacts of all time is the Nebra Sky Disk. It's a beautiful ancient object made of bronze and copper, said to represent the cosmos. It is actually believed to be the oldest ever depiction of the night sky, but now archaeologists are getting into a hot debate as to how old it actually is. It's such an extraordinary piece that it might be too good to be true. Some believe that it dates back to 3,600 years ago during the Bronze Age, which would make it an unprecedented treasure. Other researchers argue that the Nebra sky disk was crafted over 1,000 years later during the Iron Age. It's actually possible that the artifact got mixed up with an array of Bronze Age items after some looters discovered it in 2002 and reburied it away from its original site. As part of a plea bargain, the looters who stole the artifact revealed that they found it at a German hillside site called Mittelberg. But some believe the criminals lied about this and are keeping the true location of the discovery to themselves, in hopes of finding more valuable treasures later when they're free. A paper published by the Austrian Academy of Sciences refutes these claims and accuses the researchers of making false claims and ignoring decades of previous credible research. Written by a team of experts, including the director of the State Museum of Prehistory in Hall, which owns the Nebra Sky Disk, it says that where the object was found is perfectly plausible because it would have been an ideal stargazing site. The team also argues that the hillside was an appropriate place for the disk's creators to ceremonially bury it. 
So then it would be authentic and really, really old. It might seem silly, but artifacts without context only gives you a small glimpse of the story, and archaeologists are pretty passionate people. Sarcophagi of Karahia Situated into a cliffside high above a river gorge sit seven large statues overlooking northern Peru's Utcubamba Valley. These statues are actually large 15th century funeral tombs created by the Chachapoya civilization before they were conquered by the Inca. Known to the locals as the ancient wise men, the sarcophagi of Carajia sit nearly 700 feet above the valley floor. The cult of the dead was extremely important, and those at the top of the hierarchy were placed as physically high as possible to be closer to the gods. These sarcophagi are made from grass and clay and were painted white with red and yellow pigment to honor characteristics of those buried inside, usually warriors. The burunmachus found here hold warriors, and the skulls on top are said to be the heads of their enemies. Their remote location has preserved them from destruction and looters, and they constitute some of the few remaining intact pieces representing Chachapoya culture, most of which were destroyed by the conquering Incas. There were originally eight sarcophagi, but one collapsed during a 1928 earthquake. Each of the human-like constructions stand at about 8.2 feet high. Archaeologists scaled the cliff for the first time during the mid-19th century, only to discover that the sarcophagi are impressively well-preserved, but they were sort of forgotten about. More recent explorations have shared these impressive burials again with the world. Inside one, there was a mummy placed in a fetal position and wrapped up in a cocoon of wild stalks and twine, along with animal skin, ceramics, and other grave goods. Very few people have been able to take a close look at these rare artifacts left behind by a long-lost culture. That's Mystery Sphere. In 1974, a family's house caught fire in Fort George Island, Florida. The story goes that in the ashes they found a strange metal sphere with an apparent mind of its own in their backyard. It's rumored to be smaller but heavier than a bowling ball, measuring 8 inches in diameter and weighing 22 pounds. At first, the family believed that the item was a cannonball left behind from a war, but the object, nicknamed the Betts Mystery Sphere, was unusually clean and shiny for an object that old. It also seemed to be made of stainless steel, a material that was not used during that time period. Soon enough, the sphere allegedly began moving around on its own, vibrating and making unexplainable noises. When one family member played the guitar, the ball reacted by making a throbbing noise. Then, while the Betts family rolled the sphere back and forth between each other on the floor, it randomly changed directions and returned to the person who had rolled it. The family's dog also responded strangely to the sphere by crying and covering her ears with her paws. The media went crazy and the object got everyone's attention, including the military. The US military acquired the ball and performed their own tests on it. In an interview with the St. Petersburg Times, Jerry Betts, the mother of the household, explained that an independent examiner found radio waves in a magnetic field around the ball. A Navy spokesperson, on the other hand, told the newspaper that while they were unable to identify the object, they said it was man-made and harmless. After the sphere became national news, it got to be too much, and the family stopped talking about it altogether. Last I heard, they are no longer taking sphere-related inquiries. Illegal Slave Ship Three years ago, archaeologists working near Cizal, Mexico, discovered the ruins of a sunken ship called La Union, which ultimately proved to be an illegal slave vessel. It caught fire and went down in 1861 while carrying Maya captives to Cuba, not long after doing so was outlawed. It's unknown how many prisoners, along with the dozens of crew and passengers, died in the tragedy. The ship was rediscovered in 2017. Fisherman Juan Diego Esquivel led archaeologists to the site, where they found numerous artifacts in addition to the wreckage, including bottles, ceramics, and brass dining ware. At first, they were unable to identify the vessel. They knew that it was built sometime between 1837 and 1860, based on its paddle wheels and boilers. An archive search turned up La Union as the best possible match. While the ship's official designated purpose was to transport passengers and goods, it also carried illegal human cargo, despite laws that had banned the practice just months earlier. Archaeologist Helena Barba Menegas said in a statement that each slave was sold to middlemen for 25 pesos, and they resold them in Havana for as much as 160 pesos for men and 120 pesos for women. 
Many Maya captives were taken during the Castle War, a conflict between indigenous people and high-ranking citizens of Spanish descent who were imposing heavy taxes and seizing land from the Maya. Others were promised a better future working in Cuba, only to discover that they had been tricked into slavery. Following the disaster, the Mexican government heightened its efforts to stop human trafficking by performing increased inspections at its ports. Questionable Burial Since the early 1900s, the remains of several Neanderthals have turned up at a cave shelter in southwestern France, at an archaeological site called La Ferrasi. The most recent discovery is a child nicknamed La Ferrasi 8, who was found between 1970 and 1973. The child was only around two years old when they died 41,000 years ago. Archaeologists originally assumed that the skeletons at the site were deliberately laid to rest, but experts ultimately began to question whether Neanderthals buried their dead the same way that Homo sapiens do, especially considering the outdated methods used. In an attempt to gain solid answers about Neanderthals' funerary practices, a team of modern researchers recently re-evaluated the findings related to La Ferrasi 8. They discovered that much of the original data was never assessed in the first place, so they reviewed the excavation team's records, analyzed La Ferrasi 8's bones, and performed additional excavations at the cave site. The team determined that the remains were in fact intentionally buried. La Ferrasi 8's head sat higher than their body at a different incline than that of the land, indicating deliberate placement in the grave. Also, the bones contained no animal-related damage, which is a clear sign that the body was buried shortly after death. The researchers were also unable to come up with an explanation for the bones ending up in the state they were found in. They hoped to examine the other seven skeletons found at the site to see if they, too, were purposely buried. The Dropa Stones According to legend, an archaeologist named Dr. Chi Pu Te discovered 716 extraterrestrial stone discs inside a funerary cave in 1938 while leading an expedition in China's Bayan Har Mountains. Measuring 9 inches in diameter, they were covered in little grooves and hieroglyphics. When played on a record player, the discs supposedly emitted a low-frequency humming sound. The professor reportedly claimed that the discs, known as the Dropa Stones, featured stories of a UFO crash landing near the caves 12,000 years ago. The spacecraft's crew, known as the Dropa Aliens, tried to build new lives on Earth but were hunted and killed by locals. When nobody believed the professor's claims, he was forced to resign and the Dropa Stones haven't been seen since. The archaeologist and professor who allegedly found and studied the stones seems to have disappeared from the face of the Earth and the only thing remaining of the Dropa stones are grainy photographs. Perhaps these stones did exist and may not have depicted aliens at all, but perhaps drawings or writings of an ancient people that were misinterpreted. However, it looks like now we will never know. Bizarre Ball While walking his dog in Hammonasset State Park last year, Connecticut resident Bob Kirch found an egg-shaped Native American tool known as a pecked stone sphere. Kirch, a doctor by trade and an ancient artifact enthusiast, spotted the partially buried object among shells and other rocks. He noticed that it seemed different. It seemed too round to be a naturally occurring rock and was about the size of a baseball, so he immediately collected it. A few weeks later, he reported the discovery to state archaeologist Sarah Sportman, who looked into the artifact's authenticity. Sportman said that several ground stone or pecked stone spheres have been found in Connecticut, but they are a mysterious artifact type that is found all over the world and from different time periods. The function of these objects isn't definitively understood and may not be the same in all places. She added that while experts know that the Native Americans who lived in the region used the stone tools before Europeans arrived, the specific time period of their use is unknown. They could be game pieces, tools for bashing open nuts or animal bones, weights, or ritual objects. Similar artifacts found in Israel had fat, collagen, and animal bone traces on them. For now, though, researchers remain unsure of the purpose of the stone ball found by Kirch and others discovered throughout Connecticut, which are smoother than the ones studied in Israel. What do you think they were for? Let me know in the comments below. Roman Artifact in Serbia On Friday, July 10, 2020, an amazing rare Roman artifact was discovered. It happened during road construction near a landfill in Serbia. One of the road workers uncovered a mysterious stone slab engraved with Latin text. They informed the National Museum in Belgrade, and when a museum archaeologist arrived the next day, the Serbian Roman artifact had disappeared. Within just 24 hours of its discovery, it was stolen. 
According to the museum archaeologist, the artifact was probably part of a marble monument from the 2nd century AD. One side of the artifact had been engraved with a pair of feet wearing sandals, and on the other side were 15 lines of Latin text. The text, which was preserved thanks to pictures, recounted the life of a Roman military officer. This officer had apparently been behind various military attacks on the local Dacians and had served in no less than three legions throughout his career. What you may not know is that Serbia was part of the Roman Empire for roughly 600 years. It wasn't until the Slavs arrived in the Balkans in the 6th century AD that the Romans lost their power over the region. And because of this, there are plenty of archaeological artifacts hidden throughout the small Eastern European nation. Well, something or someone must have spooked the gang. Amazingly, the rare stone has now been recovered. This was after an appeal across various media platforms by the National Museum of Belgrade, and apparently the object just showed up again. Ancient Sword A man with a metal detector discovered a rare sword from around the year 1700 BC. What makes this story so interesting is that he wasn't using his metal detector in some rural field or looking through the remains of some ancient battleground. He was in his parents' backyard. The discovery was made in the small village of Panela, which is in Finland. The artifact is a bronze sword at least 4,000 years old, but smashed to pieces. It was hiding just beneath the top layer of soil in the garden, and was his first big find using a metal detector. His name is Mati Rintama, and he purchased the tool just two weeks before finding the sword. According to the local Satakunta Museum, these kinds of discoveries are quite rare. Less than 200 objects from the Bronze Age have ever been found in Finland, and out of those 200 artifacts, only 25 were swords or daggers, and out of those 25, only two were found near Panela. The archaeologists with the museum say the sword was probably deposited in shallow water. Then, over many centuries, the water receded, the area turned into a marshland, then became a field, and then a residential neighborhood. The reason this sword was put in the water in the first place was likely an attempt to please the solar divinities of a sun cult. The sword is now in Helsinki, and officials have catalogued it in the archaeological collections of the Finnish National Museum. Fundraising efforts have been proposed to cover conservation costs, hoping to exhibit the sword in a regional museum. The Face of Christ A surprising discovery was just made at St. Owen's Church of Ireland in the small Irish community of Ballymore. The church isn't that old, built as recently as 1827, but it's been decaying quite a bit, and so the locals pooled their resources and refurbished it. And that was when local historian CMS McDermott was brought in to help. As he was wandering around the site, he stumbled upon a rather strange building block, a piece of stone from the 13th century. CMS was shocked to see that the piece of stone had a carving on it that appeared to him to be the face of Christ. The thing about this church is that it was built over the site of an even older church, dating back roughly 800 years. But that much older church had collapsed, and so pieces of it were used to build the new one. That's why this 13th century stone had been used as a brick to help build the structure. But here's where things get strange. The stone, which is only about 12 inches by 8 inches, about the size of a sheet of paper, was seen by multiple other people at the site. But Siamis was the first one who actually saw the face, which almost seems to have appeared overnight. Nobody knows how that could be possible, and so we have to assume that everyone else just missed it. The mystery now is that nobody knows who carved the face into the stone, or what its purpose was. We also don't know why such an obviously important carving of Jesus Christ would be jammed into an upper church window, where nobody would see it for almost 1,000 years. St. Owen's Church received a grant of about $100,000 from the Heritage Council to refurbish the tower of the church and keep it unspoiled for as long as possible. Researchers believe now that more surprises are hidden around the site. Native American Artifacts A team of archaeologists working along the Great P.D. River near Johnsonville just discovered a small collection of artifacts that once belonged to the Native Americans who had originally lived in this part of South Carolina. According to Chris Judge, the secretary of the Archaeological Society of the PD, this river was one of the interstates of the pre-colonial era. The Native Americans who lived here used the rivers and other waterways as their highways, going by boat from one settlement to another. It was how people got around quickly, 
and it's why there were so many settlements built beside rivers. The river system helped them operate an efficient trading network. It was Chris's team who discovered evidence of groups living beside the river over a long span of about 1,000 years. The oldest artifact dates back 2,500 years to the Mississippian era. This was when native communities blanketed much of the United States. This particular area was the very last stage of development that the Native Americans ever reached before the Europeans arrived. Chris says the people who lived here were at the edge of their society's frontier. And sadly for them, they were some of the first to be contacted by foreigners, who would massacre nearly all their people and steal their land. As for artifacts, the team found nothing too exceptional like statues or weapons, but instead they found the remains of houses and the everyday objects that would have been used by the natives. The project was funded by the Florence County Council on property belonging to Santee Cooper. The team is hopeful to one day soon exhibit the artifacts at the Florence County Museum. The Stolen Nostradamus Manuscript A manuscript written by Nostradamus went missing 15 years ago. This text was written by the most famous French astrologer that ever lived, Michel de Nostradam. It was being kept safe in a library in Rome when somebody managed to steal the book. This manuscript is over 500 years old and contains what some believe to be prophecies about the future. It was only rediscovered when the ancient work was put up for sale at an auction house in Germany. This is one of the greatest and most mysterious books ever written. And yet listen to what happened after the artifact was pillaged from Rome in 2007. Investigators traced the book to flea markets in Paris, then the German city of Karlsruhe. That was where an art dealer somehow got a hold of it, then tried to sell the book off for a measly $12,000. What nobody seemed to realize as this manuscript was bouncing around flea markets was its authenticity. The book was written by Nostradamus himself containing within its 500 pages prophecies about plagues, killer robots, and a world war erupting in 2023. Thankfully, this one-of-a-kind piece of history is now back in Rome and safely stored in the library where it belongs. Ceremonial Golden Gloves The ceremonial golden gloves of Peru were discovered around the 1980s. Archaeologists aren't entirely sure what these strange golden hands were used for, but believe it had something to do with ceremonial activity. The artifacts almost look like infinity gauntlets, solid gold hands wrought by the Chimu culture on the northern coast of Peru. The Chimu culture prospered in Peru from between 900 to the year 1470. Their capital city was Chan Chan, a place filled with beautiful artwork, captivating architecture, and a people with a rich history. Sadly, the Chimu went to war with the Inca and were utterly decimated. Fifty years after the Inca obliterated the only other culture that may have been able to help them, the Spanish conquistadors arrived and wiped them out. These fantastic golden gloves were probably used in one of the mysterious religious ceremonies practiced by the Chimu. But unfortunately, it's difficult for researchers to determine exactly what kind of ceremony. Artifacts from Philip II of Macedon Archaeologists in Bulgaria recently came across some extraordinarily rare artifacts. These items were uncovered during the excavation of a Thracian tomb in the country's north. They appear to have something to do with Philip II of Macedon, who was the father of Alexander the Great. The discovery was made near the small village of Zeshatari, which was once ruled by Thracian tribes. Archaeologists found animal motifs, an exquisite tiara, 100 golden buttons, and much more. But it's not so much about what they found as who the stuff had belonged to. History experts say these artifacts came from the tomb of Gath, ruler of Cotella, and father-in-law of Philip II of Macedon. Diana Gergova, head of the archaeological team, says these artifacts are extraordinarily rare and nothing similar has ever been found in Bulgaria. The Thracians were a powerful culture of warriors who were insanely rich in gold. They lived across Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, and some of northern Greece starting about 6,000 years ago. While Greece and Rome were busy advancing themselves as civilizations, so too were the Thracians. The only difference was that the Thracians lived on the borders of these other places, so nobody really bothered them. It wasn't until the year 45 when the Roman Empire showed up and absorbed them, just swallowed them whole and nearly erased their culture. But before the Romans came along, the Thracians were insanely powerful. 
It looks like this tomb and all the artifacts in it belong to Alexander the Great's grandfather-in-law. Just two generations later, Alexander would go on to conquer the world, or at least an enormous chunk of it. The First Metal Artifact Tel Tasaf is a small village in the central Jordan Valley of Israel, with human habitation there dating back to about 5200 BC. The city was first discovered in the 1950s, but just recently, a metal artifact was discovered here that dates back to the village's origins, 7,000 years ago. That makes the artifact the oldest piece of man-made metal ever found in the Middle East. What this suggests is that metal technology appeared first in Israel, centuries earlier than anywhere else in the world. The metal object wasn't the only thing archaeologists found. They identified architectural complexes, silos once used to hold about 30 tons of grain each, and cooking facilities. This was a major settlement in Israel and shows just how advanced these people truly were. Archaeologists even found painted pottery, thousands of beads made from ostrich eggshells, items from volcanic glass all the way from Armenia, and pottery imported from Mesopotamia. But it's really the metal all which has everybody's attention. According to Professor Josef Garfinkel, the object is an elongated pin that was made from cast copper. It's pretty small and we don't know what it was used for, yet it shows actual evidence of metallurgy practices over 3,000 years before the first known bronze items were made. The Mississippian Stone Statue Tennessee has its very own official state artifact. It's one of the rarest Native American artifacts still intact after centuries. Artists made this stone statue sometime around the year 1250 during the Mississippian period. Only this was made by a group of people living in what is today Tennessee. The enormous statue, nearly two feet tall and depicting what appears to be an older man down on one knee, was discovered in 1939. A farmer was working in Wilson County when he came upon the statue completely by accident. What began as a farm actually ended up becoming the Sellers Farm archaeological site, one of the richest places in America for native artifacts. We now know that this site was a major town for Mississippian culture. Archaeologists have identified a large platform and plaza surrounded by embankments, then small dwellings on the outskirts of that. This statue was probably a way for whoever crafted it to venerate someone's ancestors. Just like how we might have photographs of our grandparents hung up on the walls, the ancient people who lived along the Mississippi had stone statues of their loved ones erected around town or situated in their own homes. Bronze Age Spear A spear from the Bronze Age was discovered in a pretty strange place. The spear, which has been dated to about 3,500 years ago, was found inside the sewage works in the English region of Sirencester. It was found during construction work for new wetland habitat. The spear predates the invasion of the Romans by quite some time. The British Bronze Age lasted from about 2500 BC until 700 BC. Britain wasn't under Roman occupation until the year 43 AD. But let's look at the actual discovery. According to the project manager, Alex Thompson, when the digger pushed its scoop into the Bronze Age pit, the very first thing revealed was this beautiful spear. Nobody had expected that the work would reveal such great artifacts so quickly. As for how it got there, archaeologists believe this spear was a family heirloom placed inside the pit, which had likely been used for ritual burials. This whole area, about 10 acres of floodplain, had once been a vast settlement of prehistoric humans. The archaeologists took as much as they could, dug as much as they were able, and then had to give up. All 10 acres are being converted into a natural site, which will house amphibians, birds, and increase biodiversity by roughly 5%. Thanks for watching! Which artifact was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!